My name is Kayla, and I am Kuruk Yurak and Hoopa. And we are at the Solano Pride Center. I first heard the term two-spirit within the Native community a few years ago when I first came out as queer. I identify as queer because it is a good blanket term, I guess. So for me, it kind of represents sort of a freedom to identify however I feel comfortable without having to justify it to other people. In the past, two-spirit people would have been very accepted in a lot of our communities. A lot of that was pushed down when um, we were colonized. Particularly, Christian missionaries came over here and told us that that was not right. The language, it's never not been a part of me, I just don't know what it is. Notung el Frank, none tongvet kukavet, koi raramuri, koi ahashmim. My name is El Frank. I am tongvet kukavet. My village is what is now Rancho Cucamonga. It's at the foot of Mount Baldy down in Southern California. I'm raramuri from the mountains of Chihuahua, and I'm a hashmim that's from the San Juan Capistrano area. And my tribes also include um, Pimu and Minar, which is Catalina and San Nicolas and San Clemente. I can't remember its Indian name though. The subject of two spirit doesn't come up in, you know, passing down from, oh, my grandmother told me the story about the time she slept with Susan, you know, those sorts of stories. Don't ever seem to get passed down or asked by anthropologists. What you get are, are people knowing that something was going on, but now since they're all Catholic, they don't want to talk about what they knew. Once I started doing language work, I then came across um, terms and the people who knew, you know, who, had, who knew where to look and how to help me find things. Ya'a shungal is man, woman. Shungal ya'a is woman, man. The one that I just uh, looked up uh, or just found, I must have looked at it a million times, is Nachawut, a woman who dislikes men or men who dislike women. Which is funny because I'm two-spirit, I'm Nachawut, but I don't dislike anybody. That's not, um, it, so it's not dislike in the term of separatists, I guess. Uh, the term two-spirit is a very individual term. It covers a lot of, um, covers a lot of bases. To some, two-spirit is strictly a spiritual thing. Two-spirit are the only ones who can bury the dead. Uh, the sun dance that people know very little about, but that sun dance, there's a, a central post that they suspend themselves from. And that, that tree that um, uh, was blessed in the old time by a winkte, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but by a two-spirit person. We permeated um, the, the sacred and the profane parts of life. To me, my two-spirit is um, a term of, it's part of my service that um, I'm able to do other things that are needed and that historically we always have been, we two-spirit have always been, those who can do what others cannot do but need to be done. I'm Deborah Miranda, a member of the Ohlone Kostano and Eslin Nation. The term two-spirit was actually invented in the mid-1990s by a group of gay and lesbian Native Americans who were searching for a word that was more culturally accurate and knowing through mostly oral traditions that there had always been this other gender or this other gender role in most 
Native communities in North and South America, knowing that and having same-sex relationships and yet not feeling completely a part of the GLBTQ sort of community. The only term I know for sure that refers to variances in gender and sexuality is the Chumash word, aki. The terms that have survived may be a handful of terms, and we only have those because those were recorded by the Spaniards, who in the end um, disposed of those people or erased them. And so the priests would write down in the record, this person came in, he says his native name is such and such, we baptized him as such and such, um, and he is a Hoya, or they would say a mujerado, a womanly man. Joseph Watto Ashio, Ahjahjai Wa'a, Batinkle Chawi Heto. My name is uh, Joseph, um, Joseph Byron, and I'm from the Ahjahjai um, people, the Pomo people, from um, Sebastopol. Um, I'm also from Kashaya and from Upper Lake. Um, I'm also Coast Miwok uh, from Bodega Bay area and Yuki from Round Valley. When I was uh, 12 years old, um, I had a, a dream. And um, in this dream, I can hear all these languages being spoken um, to me. They were all, you know, these different languages and stuff, and I, can, I could respond back. I heard this voice tell me that I was gonna learn our languages, um, and that was gonna be part of um, my responsibility. I woke up and I was like so excited. I was like, Mom, who do you know that's, you know, speaks our language? And she was like, I don't know. I ended up um, going to Berkeley um, and I was going through some of their notes and everything and um, finding, you know, information on our language because we didn't have any speakers left. We were using uh, old wax cylinder recordings. Um, and a lot of handwritten notes. In Coast Miwok, there's not really um, a word that was remembered that, you know, um, that can be, you know, equally translated into being like two-spirit or um, someone who is uh, gay, lesbian. But there was a term that was used for a male that would um, wear women's clothing. Um, he would also do um, like women's work. So um, that term, uh, they were called Lushi. How come I'm here? Tell me why I'm here to hear Karen Vigneault, Elquinan, Nipai, Santa Isabel Indian Reservation uh, from the mountains of San Diego. My name is Karen Vigneault. I'm a citizen and member of the Santa Isabel Indian Reservation, or the Ipai Nation of Santa Isabel. Uh, technically, I am Ipai, because we are from the north, and uh, we're also called Kumeyaay. We're in San Diego in English, but this is technically Kumeyaay land. Our land goes from the ocean to the Arizona border, uh, to northern San Diego, and then all the way down to Ensenada. No one's been able to give me a, an actual term or even a joking term for um, anybody that is not heterosexual, we'll just put it that way. Uh, it was a conference, I believe, up in Canada, and up there they came up with a term called Two-Spirit, and they wanted to take back what was uh, something more that would just be a native uh, term, a term that would just denote native LGBT, uh, individuals. I don't like that term because a lot of it made it seem as a, as a third gender, as someone who is neither, neither male nor female, but a third gender. And I don't think of myself as that. You know, I'm fully a woman. I love being a woman and I'm a lesbian. One of the things that I thought of was why not just sort of create a word? Um, because we don't have certain words anymore for, well, never, for things that are sort of new. Um, so the term lesbian, it would be a new term. Uh, two spirits, a new term. So I was thinking more like woman that loves woman. So that would be uh, sin in Yehovah, sin, woman loving woman. Or uh, for a male, uh, ikwich, 
uh, in your Hawaii Ikwich. So I just started doing this and really wanted to learn what these songs were talking about because what I, when I was first started singing, I did want to be a leader. Then you realize it's not about being a leader. You know, it's about preserving, about learning where you come from. So uh, I learned to start and learn the language more and more, learning more and more about songs, uh, singing more and more, and uh, it makes your heart happy. My name is Donovan Nation. I'm from uh, Verona. My people are Kumiai. Uh, we come from the ocean. A lot of people uh, know us as the Ganyos. Uh, we were we lived at the ocean uh, near the coast until we were shoved off. We were shoved off the coast and. Uh, we traveled through uh, San Diego, no, what's known as San Diego County. I would consider myself homosexual, but I don't consider myself what the government would consider themselves, the LGBT. I'm unique. I'm not what, I'm not everybody else. I'm unique. I'm not LGBT. I'm who I am, you know? Um, I'm a helper. I'm a, a community member. I'm, there's, 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 I'm not better or lower than anybody else. Other tribes honor two-spirited people, or that's not what Kumiyas call it. That's what other tribes say. Um, somebody told me yesterday, it's called Ipai Hesla, Ipai Hesla. I guess that's the modern term for a gay or lesbian Indian or whatever you want to say. I don't know, I don't know. Like I said, I don't, I don't put myself in a category. I'm not, I'm not in a category, I'm who I am. Um, and if that bothers some, somebody, that bothers somebody. I'm not gonna go out of my way to fix it. You can't fix something like this. It's just the way you are. That's the, that's the most advice I could give to somebody is be who you are. That's what my mom told me growing up. Be who you are. Mishmin Tuhis, Conrakot Canyon, Coyote Woman, Sayers Ruth. <laughs> I come from Indian Canyon and I have ancestry from what we call Ohlone territory. The term Ohlone came around in the turn of the century, right around 19th century, and definitely 21st century phrasing. I identify with it, though it is a word that my ancestors would not understand. I am in Indian Canyon, which is within the Mutsun linguistic territory of Ohlone territory. So that being said, I identify as a Mutsun woman. Indian Canyon happens to be the only federally recognized Indian country between Sonoma and Santa Barbara along central coastal California. I am not familiar with California indigenous words that would identify our third gendered community. It's frustrating because I know it's true in my heart, I know it's true in my mind, I know it's true within my community, though we still need that Western colonial academic validation. So some of those first words, first words are really hard to reconnect to. So I use two-spirit or that third gender. I, I identify as gender fluid, to, uh, pansexual, polyamorous. A queer future potentially to me would mean honoring truth and history for all of our nations. Hauka Menuea, Inyaj Kenny Ramos, we each he. In ya anyway we each ahi benegas nyapuma welch kwetamak barona indian reservation kupai my name is kenny ramos i'm the genyo ipai kumiai from the barona band of mission indians i grew up on the barona indian reservation which is in east san diego county and that's where we are right now we're on the barona indian reservation my experience with the language mostly came as an adult as for words that describe like a, a like a non-binary or like a non-heteronormative identity i've learned of ipai tla that would directly translate to uh, the, a person of the moon. There's a time when things are made, things that align with the sun and things that align with the moon. Um, and there's people that are aligned with the sun and derive power from there, and then people that are aligned with the moon and derive power from there. Um, as far as like what it specifically described, whether that described like a, you know, a, a female that then took on characteristics of a male or vice versa, um, that's open we're able to use our dreams and we would dream about 
maybe what was going on and an aid pool to offer advice. For me as a native person, my native identity always comes first. My like indigenous identity, my connection to land, uh, that is forefront at everything. My connection to community, so it's like, um, and to me, that's what Two Spirit really even signifies for me. It's just the intersection of these identities, the intersection of being indigenous and being like non-heteronormative in a like white patriarchal society. Oftentimes, I, I think in the other, in the LGBTQ plus community, there is focus on these labels that are all still colonial labels and they're all rooted in a Western colonial idea of gender and sexuality. Whereas for uh, tribal nations and a, a tribal perspective, like sexuality is essential to all living things. And so to the idea of like separating that sexuality from the living thing and then categorizing that and then, you know, that's that's colonial. For me, like my sexual expression, my gender identity, all that, that's just I, that's just a part of me. It's nothing that is any like different or outside of me that needs to be labeled or categorized. That's just how I am. I think that or I, I hypothesize that maybe um, a lot of us are in the process of reclaiming those ways of knowing like right now. Because I know that's how it is for like my community right now, and I think maybe that may be the case for tribes across California, and that's because of our like atrocious history with the missions and you know Mexican ranchos and California Indian slavery. All those things have worked to really like destroy our culture, and only now are um, are there I think our tribes really trying to get back into those traditional ways of understanding and revitalizing uh, our ways of knowing through language, through ceremony, through songs. For me, I don't know if it's like I'm rooting for a queer future as much as I'm rooting for like an indigenized future or like a, like a decolonial future. But like when I look around and a lot of the like big issues that are facing not just this country, but also the planet in terms of like the environment, like how do we get back to indigenous ways of knowing, which oftentimes are like, you know, well, not even oftentimes, like pretty much always rooted in connection to the land and living in, um, in balance with the land, but that it only comes after we start to actually acknowledge the history of this country, which is founded on settler colonialism, and we acknowledge the people whose land everyone is standing on, and we acknowledge like their connection and their culture and start to treat that as something that's valuable.